Well, uh, time now to dive into relationship talk. And uh, like I mentioned, Benjamin Zulu is in studio here today. And we want to talk about the lazy man syndrome. Karibu sana. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's not a syndrome you mentioned with a smile. <laughs> the lazy man syndrome. It's bad, bad news. Very bad. <laughs> Just, I tell you, it's a, it's a wasting disease uh -huh. among men. Mm. Um, th th let's start with the symptoms. There are men who simply lack drive, lack energy. They lack ambition. They're not excited about life anymore. Mm. They may have a job. But they try, they stay where they are, and they don't try to reach for anything different. So what contributes to that? Is, that? is that a psychological thing? Is that a social thing? Is it an insecurity with their emotions? What contributes to it? It's a mental posture. People adopt. Do you know? That's adopted. Yes. All children are excited. Nobody, no child is born lazy or disinterested with life. All children are excited. They play with energy. They say, when I grow up, I want to be this. So this condition we're talking about today is a quiet. It's learned. You, nobody comes down. Nobody is born with it. Mm. Or if you, if you look at children playing, you, yes, you will spot some are reserved, others are expressive, but all of them are intrigued. Mm -hmm. All of them are curious. All of them want to grow. All of them want to, even before children know anything, they keep trying. Children are about experimentation. <laughs> we all want to see how they, uh, we see how they, they want to experiment. So what, what is happening with, by the time a man reaches a point where he just seated there. Now, it actually makes a man useless. Hmm. And I'll tell you where it comes from. It has three sources. One okay. of the sources is unresolved psychological pain. That man went through a heartbreak, traumatizing breakup. That was so deep and shattered every fiber of his being that he lost orientation about life. Mm. There before, he wanted better. He wanted to build a house, wanted to get a car, buy this for the other, do this and that. After that heartbreak, people when they go through disappointment, or sometimes it's a breakup or sometimes it's a grief. You can, they can lose a parent who has meant a lot to them. Yeah. They can even lose a child of them. They, when you go through a psychological loss, you, you, it's like a wound. You're being injured. You're supposed to plow through until you heal. You go through shock. When you lose things, you go through shock, uh, denial. There's a uh, bargaining. There's anger. Then accept. You're supposed to go through to acceptance. When you're driving along uh, uh, this Naivasha Nairobi Road and you reach Kijabe, Kimende, there's a lot of fog there. Mm -hmm. Usually just slow down and put on fog light, but you don't stop moving. Mm. That's how stressful situations in life are. Mm. Slow down when you meet fog, but keep on plowing through. If you stop there, this is a place for fog. You mm. will stay there with it. Mm. So this is a complicated grief those men who have not gone through. Okay. Uh, so they lose drive for life. Another, another thing is it is model. James, I want to warn people. If you grow your son under a useless, sleepy man, Why? and you let him grow seeing that, and you're the one paying all the bills, you're the one doing everything, clothing him, coming up to do everything every day, the man, the, the boy learns this is the normal. I How will you me. rouse him to work hard when he can see his father seated being fed? Women are contributing to this disease because they are too addicted to staying married. But they grow their children under uh, a dysfunctional uh, man. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Benjamin, what are you saying? Mm -mm. So what, what is the solution to that though? So the, second, uh, it's, it's the solution for bad modeling uh -huh. and lazing is rouse the man to action. Or... Find a way to give environment, the, an, another kind of environment to your son that shows him men in action. Okay, I, I don't want people saying that they are running to quit their relationships because Benjamin is saying... That's this right, guy I lazy. see the danger yes. and I'm coming there. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. If you... And I've dealt with in many cases. Actually, in many cases, uh, it's usually not even a marriage, it's usually a relationship. Many people, some of these people can't even officiate they are too laid back to even officiate a marriage, even to officiate a marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's too laid back. But this is what we are saying. As you grow up, your son, as you grow up, your, even sometimes daughters, may, this condition is more prevalent among men. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where do women check in with this? Uh, women, uh, this, we still have girls who don't have drive, but many of them is drugs. For them, it will be drugs and things that have uh, distracted them. Okay. And because women are more open to mentorship and influence by other older women, uh, they tend generally to, even in high school, used to have a form one being adopted by form threes. There's mother figure, form fours, to, more, to mentor them. You don't have that in boys. Okay. <laughs> you don't need a so father it's figure. it's more prevalent among, among men. men. Okay. So it, it can be modeled. 
you need to be very careful the moment you begin to see your, and you're not saying take your children away from their father that's not what you're saying you may have a, a nobody's perfect you may have a person who's one side is reliable is trustworthy some of these men don't cheat don't drink don't <laughs> some of them, they're just there laid back but if you can have a man who's paying the bills there's a level to which you can live with mm -hmm. but you need to rouse your own son to stir him up to expose him one of the biggest um, um antidote to this laziness is exposure take him to where things are happening take him to expose him to uh, even uh, there's a time we were taken to the seven fox the power generation we see the the, the, the things moving there things being that achievement we will take your kid to airport just around drive around let him see things happening mm -hmm. so arouse the boy to dreaming to aspiring the third cause I want to tell you is, uh, is addictions. A man who is addicted to gaming or gambling or drugs, or any addiction takes away drive and direction and focus. A person who is addicted is, in po is possessed by that thing. Mm. And, and they may, every money they get, they take it there. I mean, um, uh, th there are some people who have gone abroad to work, then they are sending the money home to their parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their parents say, I've already bought you the in concert, I've bought you a, a plot. By the time you come, there's no plot. You are sending money, you are just drinking it. Anybody who is addicted to anything, you can't trust them with money, can't trust them with any dream. Mm -hmm. And we said, do not respect too much. Just because a person is your parent, a person is your husband, a person, don't just respect because he's your, my brother. Look at the character you're dealing with. Many people have been set back by many years mm -hmm. for trusting the wrong person just because, uh, you know, it's my father, you know, it's my brother. You know, it's <laughs> no, look at the character you're dealing with. So this lazy man syndrome shows in that lack of looking for tomorrow. There's a boy who inboxed me after uh, talking about this and told me, man, uh, it sounds like the kind of man I've been hinting at. I am one of them. I mean, it's cool, but it's a struggle to wake up to go to it. Let me show you from the inside now. It's the boy who wrote me. It's someone in Rwanda or somewhere. He told me, I wake up, I, I, I struggle to go to work, to go to university. I, I just let life unfold. Mm -hmm. Do you see the perspective? <laughs> I just want to see, to let life unfold. Yeah. He is not on top of things. I told him you have three, uh, three causes. One, three possibilities. One, you have unresolved disappointment. And true to that, his father had abandoned the family. Divorce is one of the most damaging things to children. And they confuses them about. He, had, he, had, he was here to reconcile that breakup. Mm -hmm. So he had lost taste for, he was just there. We found that was the cause. In other men, I usually find that many of them grew up, um, it's, a, it's a, sometimes a breakup, other, other people, you can't see where it came from. And I wanted to leave the mo this is the most hidden one. There's a phase, a healthy child goes through called teenage. From 13 to all the way to 19, called growth spot. And boys there eat a lot of food and they sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. It's biological. It needs, the body there needs a lot of food mm -hmm. and rest to grow. And there's a lot of rapid growth. Even girls, mm -hmm. that rapid growth you see them going through needs a lot of material and mm -hmm. rest. So they, they have that. Uh, and it's a lot in high school because that's the teenager in that they need to be woken up with a bell, <laughs> you know. So it's, there's that natural phase we all plow through as the body grows. Now, those who get addicted to the pleasures of sleeping and eating during that season, and they don't outgrow it during early adulthood. Supposed to check out at around 20. Yeah. Supposed to check out and develop the zeal again for life. You can wake yourself up without an alarm. Some people don't outgrow that phase. So some don't have any unresolved psychological issues. Some don't have any pain underneath. No, no. Some is because of the teenage phase they did not outgrow. Okay. And they went on. If you go to the university and find somebody who's doing partying, just uh, sleeping and dancing, that is the prolonged teenage period. And it becomes very damaging. And it can go through to 38, 45. You can find a man is so grown and it's all about partying. Mm. So Joyce, the solution to everybody listening to never use the word I'm bored. Leave boredom to children. Okay. Boredom means you're disengaged. That is the first, the early signs of mental lethargy, lack of energy, lack of drive. Joyce saying you're bored means you're disengaged. You don't know where you're going. You're lost. It's okay to say I'm tired, meaning you're busy, you've been exhausted by work. Now you need to rest and wake up again to work. But never say, hey, for me, God, for me, that for hey. You must wake up and go to your home. You, you, you can never be bored just when you're doing your craft. When you're, some activities will not be interesting, of and, course. I mean, and there's a thin line there between someone being lazy and bored, I guess, because they're just not interested in the thing, and their passion. And where does that come into, into play with this discussion? Purpose, passion, and what someone is really born to do. Very good. Now, another reason why you might, and if, if you are constantly engaged in work that is outside your skill set, outside your, your strengths, that is taking too much from you and not, not interesting you at all, you can find yourself bored. Mm. 
It's not you as bored, it's the activities that is disinteresting for you. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to adjust and go to activities. And let's tell people not to be addicted to one career until many years and you know this is not you. You're supposed to be adjusting over the years to stay on the line of your interest. As you do a wide area of your first career, you can tell which activities are closer to you. So we are, we are saying, we are not saying you must enjoy everything you're doing. Some things are not in your strength. Mm -hmm. But once you realize these are not engaging me, what do you do? Adjust to others that engage you to keep high level of interest because Remember we said you are only safe as a human being when you are growing, when you are improving, when you are adjusting yourself. Even in relationships, once you start dating a person, when you, start, you come together now, we are, uh, carve a path. Remember I told you you are only safe when you always have a project in front of you. Mm -hmm. When you always have a thing to do in front of you. Mm. When, and if money comes, Joyce, and you don't have a project to take it, that money scatters. It flies like it had wings. Yeah. People, uh, people can sense when you have money. They, they, they start borrowing you. I'm stuck. Oh, my grandmother broke her leg. Send me 10,000. Oh, my child is sneezing. Send me 3,000. I don't know what. You hear funny exit. Someone told me I've been choked by Ugali. I said, we send some money. <laughs> Going to hospital. And the person, oh, I was like, go to my ear. Just because you have some money lying there. And again, this is, it's not even related to personality. There are people who may not be as extravagant or outgoing, but still, they are not lazy. Right. Very good. Introverts are resolved, but that doesn't mean they're slow. Mm -hmm. They're just not outwardly expressive around new people. Because I just want us to set expectations exactly. straight. In case there's a lady there, I think, my husband is not as outgoing as whoever, whoever. Mm -hmm. It's not about him being exactly. as outgoing. It's about does he do what he's set out to do. A, a man who is introverted, reserved, but has drive and energy for life. That's a very healthy person. Extroverts are expressive. They get in their social energy by talking, by expressing. That doesn't... Some extroverts are also very lazy. They just talk, but they don't work. So it's not the talking or the keeping quiet today we are discussing. Yeah. It's the energy, the drive, the desire, the push, to the resolve to see things through. One of the signs of laziness is starting things and never completing them. Never completing them. The people who they start, and you remember that childhood tendency to lose excitement at everyone. You start something, you lose excitement, you leave it. Mm. Start something, you lose excitement, you lose it. Mm -hmm. Even, and, and that can also happen in relationships. Every relationship has a rough patch. The people keep quitting because, <laughs> and, and, and we said, you're not allowed to be a coward and to be in love at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Love requires that uh, ability to say, I started this thing, I must plow it through. Mm -hmm. That's a courage you're saying. So you, you cannot be lazy and still be in a relationship because it requires work, requires courage. Okay. And we, we said courage is the ability to continue doing what you started, even after the excitement has died. All right. Well, I want us to take a break at this point. And when we come back, I'm going to take you back to what she'd mentioned earlier about modeling um, good behavior. Should we call it that? And, and right. modeling sort of this drive for mm -hmm. life, ambition. You're right. Uh, and how to do that? Because we've also we're also trying to clarify. This is not about just breaking relationships. Because right. we've also said right. divorce is one of the biggest traumas children That's face, right. and it messes you up for life. Um, and so I'm inviting you as well to send in your questions to triple one triple four triple one. We'll be continuing this conversation here with Benjamin in just a moment, and I'll be back after this. All right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. Thank you to all of you again for your company. I understand you're having a bit of a signal issue in some areas. Hopefully that's resolved quickly so that you can join back into the show. So if you can't get through our SMS line, you can also comment on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya. And uh, shout out to everybody once again watching the show. There's a young man. He's turning nine years old today. His name is Fabian and he's the son of actually one of our directors here, Dan. Happy birthday to you, young man. Thank you very much for watching the show. We do appreciate you and happy birthday to all October babies as well. All right. Uh, with that said, I think uh, let's jump back into our discussion here with Benjamin Zulu. And uh, we're talking about the lazy man syndrome. And just to clarify, this may also affect ladies. But what we're saying is that predominantly it's something that affects gentlemen, mostly also because of just women's, I guess, openness towards mentorship, you know, counseling from other women and the like. And uh, before we went on break, you were talking about um, this sort of the sort of environment that a young man is raised in and how that can have a tremendous impact into how he also becomes and, mm -hmm. and carries himself. 
And there was a very strong statement you made there. And already some people have actually <laughs> are on it already. Um, that um, And it's actually a question that we've posed on our Facebook page. If you raise your child under a lazy man, you know, will they also be lazy because they're copying what their father is doing? It's not automatic. Some of us grew up under, under homes where it was the mother was the matriarch. Our father was just there. Mm -hmm. But we, we turned out ambitious. Our mothers were conscious to make sure we are exposed to men who are driven. Mm -hmm. And that does not mean you have to separate your child from their parents, but make sure, much as the man is at home, but you know at the back of your mind, I don't want my sons to turn out like him. Mm. So what, what they will do is, they will make sure we have connection to this uncle. Every other holiday, they will ship us off to go visit a certain uncle. Who is oh, they know the influence is positive. When they succumb, you compensate for what you don't want them to pick. Mm. Deliberately, without even telling them. You don't even tell the children mm. because they don't, cannot understand the higher dynamics. Yeah. They come to appreciate it later. Like some of us now later seeing. Um, now, why th some of these men attract women is because they look harmless. Girls who grew up under violent fathers are driven to the men who are opposite who look harmless. Mm. Some of these men are harmless and also useless. Wow. <laughs> okay, you know, let me let me read a comment here because now uh, jo Jose Maina Nduhio seems pretty upset with us today saying, I beg to disagree. Kwani Benjamin Zulu saying that men are always the problem in the relationship. He showed Kwani Mnadis Wanaume. If I was told to choose between death and following Benjamin's advice, you would choose death. Really? <laughs> okay. You tuned in from Masai University, and I feel like I've seen your comments before. But um, yeah, I've, has, I've also heard of him before. Now, yeah. what we are saying is, that it's not all men. I don't know where he's getting the the, the, the impression that we are talking about. I'm all men from. We're right. talking about the lazy men. Yeah. And they exist. We don't pick this from the air. <laughs> pick right. them from the practical field. Right. If if Joseph, you're not a lazy man, we are not addressing you. Right. <laughs> we are addressing them. No stress. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we were saying this. Um, in this life, some people start out well, then they change in between. And you can't keep quitting your relationship because the partner changed. Sometimes you have to find a way to compensate and carry on with the life. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's the, the, the solution is not always to quit. The solution is to be conscious what is happening. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who, another problem, Joyce, I told you about settlers and achievers. <laughs> I told you about travelers and, and meanderers in life. There are people who want better. Who keeps going back to school or uh, you know acquiring more skills or so it's very important for those who are outside marriage as you come in get a person who has your speed in life who has your rhythm you can come together but within five years you're so different as if you're strangers mm. because you are driven you're on the move and i told you of a guy who i pity him the girl is a settler himself is a mover mm. he wants to buy shopping in bulk he wants to buy several packs of uh, those tissue papers. He, he, when he's buying uh, uh, cooking oil, he's buying 20 liters. But the guy wanted to buy half a liter. <laughs> you know, the small one. Mm. And the girl will fight over that to no end. Mm. Now, the problem with that, with that guy is maybe he looked at everything else, except whether they could rhyme. They asked me to tell, to tell them characteristics of women to avoid. And told them one of them is endless opposition. <laughs> so women just oppose. So we are saying one problem you find in families is one is a progressive. The other one is very laid back. Mm. Who not? So one lady told me she wanted to buy this kind of car. There's money wanted a smaller one. In other places you find a guy who wants to buy a bigger one. The lady wanted a, that difference can cause a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. It does not mean when we are when we are compatible, we think alike every time. Mm -hmm. But it means we are willing to give way. We disagree and say, well, okay, let's just go with your idea. It's it's okay. Right. And Joyce, that's a place of submission. Men should submit also to the wife. Wow. The Bible says, submit one to another. You mm -hmm. know, we blow the other verse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out of proportion women submit yeah. and we forget later so submit one to another yeah this is a place to give way to my wife when she's better in an area let her do it let her design those things let her dis sometimes i take her ideas and implement them there's that it's not submission is not one way it's two it's two way so one one of the difference you have is when nobody is giving way to the other when a person has slowness or laziness or lack of, of ambition and the other one is on the go, it can be solved easily by the one who was a little bit laid back thinking we have arrived if they had aimed at building a house and they have built it and you are settled. How do you, how do you 
assess then a person in the dating phase whether this so that these are the challenges that you avoid from the beginning right e even in conversations what you guys are trying to do there are people who joys they'll just you, you don't see them taking risks a healthy person will take a risk and say i wanted to do a bcd and i'll, I'll try that business even if, even if it even if it collapses i will have learned but let me try these people we are calling lazy men syndrome do not try anything they won't rock the boat they're too afraid they use the language that young man told me i just want to let life unfold will that person try anything will they open a business will they try to purchase save up for, for anything uh, you don't know about tomorrow don't force things just be satisfied just go with the flow <laughs> you know there's no need of uh, disturbing you know life is like that don't know what will happen tomorrow that's how they think yeah. and you think they are joking and many of them are in church joys many of them are very good they have a routine that is very rigid a routine, show up in church on time, pray on time and come back home, and then just that, just that. But they are stagnated. They don't grow. I mean, this is a serious problem, though, then. I yeah. mean, and when, you, when we've talked about, you know, a lot of ladies uh, really trusting God to find the right spouse that they can submit to, this makes it very You're hard right. to You're right. then submit. Uh, and, and you know, Joyce, I want to tell ladies that singleness is not a life-threatening condition. Mm-hmm. And marriage is not a life support system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't, don't marry with a compromise on serious things. You'll be restless inside. Yeah. Look until you find one whom you rhyme. And once you find each other, agree that we are going to keep progressing and moving and trying. I, I, there are couples who fought over. One wanted to live in Karen. Another one wanted to live elsewhere. Somewhere in, where cheaper. Oh, you can find things. Because they, they, had, born, they had both grown up in the same slum area, mm. same social status. But one was so driven. The guy was aiming at, I want us to get our children, they find us in the higher area where we can show them big cars, can show them big possibilities. But the ladies are, what if we are auctioned? What, no, no, we can't afford that rent. No, you look at your job. The fear, the fear, the fear. The other guy is using faith and believing. We are not saying you'll be reckless, try to break your back over that. But we're saying try better, pushing yourself forward. When you're dating, look for a person whom you talk that language. Mm. You use faith more than you use fear. Be very careful, Joyce. Some people sound it, they make it look, sound like caution, but it's actually a paralyzing fear. It's actually a kind of fear that holds them back. And I told the other day that poverty mentality, I've studied poverty mentality like a phenomenon myself. Mm. Because I tried helping orphans, I tried helping indie people, I get a sponsor to help them, and they tell, okay, come, now start school. The day they're reporting for school, they're being given sponsorship, they don't show up. They went for Matanka Yang Goya Shush. Who mm. shall go? Oh, we changed my, my mother is here thinking about it. I did that. Me and my friend were trying to help needy children for about 10 cases. On the day they were coming, they get a motorbike accident. Motorbike accident. On the day they were coming, they were, they were the stomach upset. They mm. missed opportunities when everything we had worked was working until I, I, I arrived at the root of it. It's poverty mentality. Some this work we're, we're calling laziness. Sometimes it's rooted to being conditioned to survival, not success. So whenever the chance for success comes, success always requires some courage and uh, some ability to take a risk and to dare and to try new things. They don't have that. They don't have that. They would rather stay with the comfortable. Let's explore that further. I like what you've said that there, there are people who are actually conditioned to survive That's than right. to chase success. Exactly. And I think that applies everywhere, not just your finances, but even now your relationships and how you treat one another in the relationship. I saw an article that was done by Catholic Church. They did a lot of research about the third world country. The journal was called The Science of Inequality, and the article was called The Psychology of Poverty. <laughs> so they were saying poverty conditions people not to think about tomorrow too much. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a family where when you get today's food, they relax. I don't know we are so tired, thank God. Mm. We, it's lunchtime that, that we have today's food. Yeah? They, are also, they don't value, so the article was saying poverty habits, poverty has habits that reinforce it. One of them is not valuing tomorrow. Just have you tried to get a, a fundi or mechanic or something? Have you seen how hard it is to get a reliable person for mm. small tasks? Mm -hmm. That's where poverty mentality prevails. They talk like they're needy, but give them a job, they cheat, they cut corners, they don't show up, they're not reliable. To get a person to build a latrine at home, <laughs> reliably, mm -hmm. without taking you drama, 
his hand. So it is to say there are people are conditioned and I knew because I grew up in a pressurized environment myself. If you grew up in a slum or in a poverty environment, just know that your conditioning was for survival, mm. for today's food, for mm. basic clothing. We didn't know that there were clothes for sleeping. We didn't know there were shoes for inside the house. We didn't know that there was basic, just one shoe for everywhere. <laughs> you know, and the shoe was made with a, with a, a vehicle tire. <laughs> So that was survival and it made it look like normal. So my normal idealized was so far behind. I've had to expose myself deliberately, Joyce, mm. to learn that you can sit down with money and it is not eating. Mm. I never saw that. I was valuing mobile apps by how much loan they could give me. I had to switch to how much I can save. Now instead of searching maximum loan, I check maximum saving limit for I'm sure. I want to experience saving. I'm, I'm retraining my mind to abundance because I came from scarcity. So yeah. survival and scarcity came from, that's what conditions you. Mm. Now, if you grip up in that, that's why they keep pumping money to slums and poor, thinking they will improve. That In the West, they try to eliminate ghettos in, in, the, in America. And they pumped money. The ghettos was not changed. They built better houses, but the guys lived as if they're still living in the ghettos. Mm. They came to realize it's not just the environment, it's the mindset. It's the mind. You give them money, they squander it. Tomorrow they go back to hustling again. Mm. They look for today's money, they eat today, they go back to sleep. Tomorrow it's raining, they, are, they have no food. So, wow. and, and it's, so just, it's a mental. Sometimes this laziness is coming from a conditioning to poverty. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want to take some questions um, and, and also start talking about then how do we address this, especially for the ones who are already in a relationship. So if you're in the dating phase, you have some moments to kind of get things straight and get them aligned. That's right. But if someone is already in a relationship, marriage, let's say, perhaps they're even children in, in this relationship. You know, how does one begin addressing that very briefly? And then I take some questions. All right. So one of the ways is don't let the family collapse. You step up and do what is needed. Don't transfer your children from those good schools to a bar to, until they're traumatized. You know, sometimes that downgrading is very traumatizing. Yeah. Children will take eternity to adjust and they'll feel their self-esteem has been, you know, damaged. So if something has happened, the breadwinner has lost job and they are too lazy to look for another one. Mm. Or they have messed it up with the drinking or they just misbehaved until they lost it. Okay. Don't sit there mourning. Try to do what you can to compensate. All right. The next thing, shield the children. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Shield them from that kind and of trauma. And I think for, for the women, it's important to say, do it with wisdom, yes. right? So there's a subtlety that's required because I you still this. want to allow your man to feel like he's the head of the home. He might be going through a phase and you, you don't necessarily feel like he is, but you don't have to make him feel like no, he's don't not. Say, some things when you say them, they can damage. Right. Some of these things, you do them wisely. The way Abigail did, mm -hmm. she never told Nabal that she went to meet David and negotiate yep. peace. Yeah. 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 Wow. Very quickly through some questions here. My time is, is up. Um, someone here says, um, hey, Benjamin, uh, uh, how can one deal with fear and low self-esteem? This thing has terrorized me for long. Please, you need to see a professional to talk about that. Fear and low self-esteem. I'm happy you can identify what is happening, but it has a root. Mm. It is coming from a root. There's an injury that was done to your spirit. Okay. Yeah. Another person here says, hey, Joyce, from today's topic, I'm a lady, but I feel like I'm also going through the lazy man syndrome. I'm 20 years old, battling depression and anxiety, and this has been going on for a while. I've been ailing from an undiagnosed condition for quite some time now. And honestly, this has been the lowest moment of my life. Lastly, I also come from a toxic home where my dad has been a drunkard all his life. Nothing motivates me anymore. And it, is just that 20. it is that undiagnosed condition and the abuse from home. Hers is not laziness, please, lady, don't call yourself that. Mm. Yours is a condition that needs treatment. Please see a professional. Some will, or will see you even for free, even if you don't need to inform at home or call up, you know, counselors. You can be assisted. Right. Right. Okay. Another one here says, Hey Joyce, I agree divorce can contribute greatly to this syndrome. My parents divorced about 15 years ago and my brother who is now a teenager is struggling through this phase because there's no mentorship by the real man he's supposed to first mm -hmm. learn from, his father. And on reaching out to him to tell him the situation and ask him to take initiative, he keeps running away from this responsibility. Parents, it's not about the presence, but your presence. Mm, I like that. Mm, not so not gifts. about the gifts, exactly. but your presence mm. that matters the most. And that's absolutely true. I like that. Yeah. And I like that person can identify that the brother uh, uh, is, is struggling with the divorce. Mm. And we need to warn people that avoid divorce as much as you can because the repercussions can be lifelong. Absolutely. We're not saying you stay in abuse. Yeah. When you have to do it, 
you can, but we are saying avoid it when you can. Yeah, I think to summarize, we can say this, that if, if you are going through any sort of situation where you've faced some sort of trauma in the past um, or you're dealing with something right now, seek counseling, seek mm -hmm. some help. I think we need to normalize being able to talk about our problems and to talk about our struggles and to find help for them. And uh, if you are raising you know, your own children by yourself, I hope you're paying attention to the different, inf it's not just you telling them that other people are bad, you're gonna be messing up your child for the future. And uh, even to the ladies, I think if your man is struggling with something, let's learn to be gracious with one another and to give each other, you know, space to open up and to the and, men and time to, to to come into what they need to but also to the men to start I want to ask the them if you feel like you have no energy boy have a conversation somewhere yeah. let's talk about it yeah. don't die then how can people reach you Benjamin Zuru KE everywhere Benjamin Zuru KE at Gmail and also Facebook Benjamin Zuru KE thank you so much fantastic thank you so much Benjamin um, I really do appreciate you coming through and having this conversation with us especially as we get through the end of the year mm -hmm. and people start thinking about 2021 purpose that you're not going to be that lazy person in the next year all right well we're going to take a break now and when we come back we're going to be uh, getting some music from the Safaricom Choir this is a Safaricom Youth Orchestra uh, as we continue celebrating some of our heroes from Mashuja Day. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And I'll be back after this.